Hello students! I am so excited to share this lecture with you. This has been one of the lectures that I have done for a very long time, but I think it's still relevant and still really interesting. It's one of those lectures that I say I dare you not to like it because it's really interesting. So we're going to talk a little bit about transitions improving your coherence and clarity, which really has to do with making those transitions, making ideas seamless, right? So here's an example of a paragraph that needs coherence, right? It says, some television viewers claim that Donald Duck cartoons are immoral. For 50 years, Donald has kept company with Daisy. Donald's nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, are apparently the children of a Miss Duck who was last seen in a comic book in 1937. Donald is drawn without pants. The opinions of these persons have been largely ignored by the general public. So, I have used this Donald Duck sort of pseudo paragraph for a while here, but it is from a writer's reference. This is kind of the face I get when I get paragraphs like this. I think, hmm, what exactly is the person trying to say? I think I know, but I'm not sure. So what do you think that the author is implying? So first, what is the central idea? What is the main idea that the author is trying to say? Right, That some television viewers claim that Donald Duck cartoons are immoral. So Donald Duck is immoral. That's the main central idea that's running throughout the whole paragraph. Uh, for 50 years, Donald has kept company with Daisy. Again, kind of goes with that immorality. Uh, Donald's nephews are apparently the children of a Miss Duck who hasn't been seen in a long while, right? So all of these things follow as support for, her, for Donald Duck's immorality, and yet the, the writer didn't really say that, right? And then Donald is drawn without pants. Another, right, example of his immorality and then these opinions have been largely ignored. So how do we fix this paragraph? So the first solution is keep referring back to the central idea or the main idea, right? And this goes for both a paragraph and eventually an essay. Keep bringing back that central idea even when you think it's redundant. So you can transition from idea to idea more easily by reminding the reader of your main point. Tell us again. So here's a lot clearer relationships. All the, the author really did was add a few instances where he, um, he or she refers back to the central idea, the main idea. And you can see how much better this paragraph gets, right? From a D paragraph to a C paragraph. So it says, some television viewers claim that Donald Duck cartoons are immoral. For 50 years, Donald has kept company with Daisy, a relationship that to some seems suspicious and dishonorable. Donald's nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, are apparently the illegitimate children of a Miss Duck who was last seen in a comic book in 1937. It seems indecent and improper to these critics that Donald is drawn without pants. Donald's dressing habits clearly upset these particular television viewers. The opinions of these persons have been largely ignored by the general public, right? So the relationships between one idea and the next are so much clearer. So you're not really being redundant. You're not just repeating yourself. Instead, you're showing the reader how these ideas connect to each other. Um, if you don't know what illegitimate means, it means someone that had a child outside of marriage. Um, you can look it up. It used to be a lot more um, scandalous uh, in the United States. It is no longer so. I believe that more people have children outside of marriage than they do within marriage, but that's a whole other lecture. Solution number two, use common transitional words and phrases. So transitions are like road signs. They tell readers what they're expected to do and how to respond. I know for second language students, this can be difficult, but the more you can learn to use these in your writing, the better. So, so here's some more. Here's some examples of transitions. Um, things like first, second, next, finally, those are to show movement. Um, to show example, words like for example, to illustrate, for instance. Um, to add another idea, things like in addition, furthermore, etc. Um, to show a contrast, on the other hand, however, instead, to show a result. Um, so, therefore, as a result, 
uh, to conclude, where it's like finally, in conclusion, as a result. So here's a paragraph that gets even better with just those basic common transitional phrases and words. Some television viewers claim that Donald Duck cartoons are immoral. For example, for 50 years, Donald has kept company with Daisy, a relationship that to some seems suspicious and dishonorable. In addition, Donald's nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, are apparently the illegitimate children of a Miss Duck who was last seen in a comic book in 1937. Finally, it seems indecent and improper to these critics that Donald is drawn without pants. These dressing habits clearly upset these particular television viewers. However, the opinions of these persons have been largely ignored by the general public. Right? So now we went from like a C paragraph to maybe even a B paragraph just with the connections, right? And then adding on those transitions. Solution number three. Create your own transitional sentences, clauses, and phrases. Now, this is much more difficult for me to teach, especially for ESL students. But I find the very best way to do this and to be able to learn this is to read, read, read. Read more. Listen to programs like National Public Radio, um, even CNN and the news programs like that. Um, podcasts that are a little bit not not too um, casual, not too colloquial, things that are um, a little more formal and academic, you will start to kind of hear those transitional sentences, clauses, phrases, and be able to incorporate them into your own writing. So how do you do this? Again, repeat and refer back to the central idea. When in doubt, add more about how your ideas connect to the central idea. Uh, create a bridge from one idea to the next so the reader can easily move to the next idea. Sometimes that bridge is a traditional um, transition. Other times that's a complete sentence. Um, think of a pond without a bridge, right? Just rocks that you have to jump over. It would be a lot easier if you just had that bridge to transition, right? So think of it sort of that way. Don't make your reader jump from idea to idea. So here's the third revision, right? Look at the revision, how much longer? So here it goes. Some television viewers claim that Donald Duck cartoons are immoral. According to these viewers, Donald's relationship with Daisy is an example of his immorality. For 50 years, Donald has kept company with Daisy in a relationship that to some seems suspicious and dishonorable. In addition, some people question the morality of a cartoon that features three children of unknown parentage. Donald's nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, are apparently the illegitimate children of a Miss Duck who was last seen in a comic book in 1937. Finally, it seems indecent and improper to these critics that Donald is drawn without pants. Although few people ever expect to see any animal in pants, Donald's dressing habits clearly upset these particular television viewers. Luckily for the famous duck, the opinions of these persons have been largely ignored by the general public, right? You can do this, right? It's not that hard. All the person did was add more connections, right? More, um, more uh, transitions, more ideas that keep can that keep going back to the the main idea and the central idea, right? Um, so here you can see there's a complete sentence that says this is an example of his immorality. Don't be afraid to come out and straight tell the reader, okay? Just be forward about it. Um, again, here's three children of unknown parentage, right? Coming out and just saying it. And then here in uh, Western writing, we really do like sort of those quips at the end that really wrap everything up. Luckily for the famous duck, right? Those are the types of, the types of things that say, hey, my paragraph is finished. It feels good. Or even an essay, right? And you feel done. It feels complete. So, uh, in sentence two and four, they added in, uh, the writer added a transitional sentence. In sentence seven, there's a transitional clause. Uh, sentence eight, there's a transitional phrase. And you can compare, right? Look how this paragraph has changed. The main components of the paragraph have not changed. So when students come to me and say, oh, I can't write anymore. No, you can. In fact, you don't even have to often get more information. You just need to clarify the relationships between ideas, right? So here's the first draft. Look at that font, right? Here's the second draft, already getting smaller in the font. Here's the third draft, right? Look how much smaller the font is and how that thing has really developed. And here's the fourth and final revision, 
right? That looks wonderful, like so much more dense, and yet the main ideas are still the same. Hopefully, you now have an idea of how to make your paragraphs longer, stronger, and make more sense. All right, I will see you online.